Back in 2021, I bought my very first OpenWRT capable Wi-Fi router, the new Wi-Fi 3D2 that is a dual band gigabit Wi-Fi router. But it is now 2024 and I want to upgrade to a much better one. And the folks at the Backspace Discord suggested to try the Linksys EA8001. And checking the website first of Linksys, we can see the photo of the item or the product. And it looks good than the new Wi-Fi one. And the notable features on the specifications is it is tri-band. So AC2200 and it has a Wi-Fi 5 technology. It has 5 gigabit Ethernet ports, 4 antenna that are not detachable, 716 MHz of quad-core CPU, a USB 3.0, and of course, the most important one, we can flash with OpenWRT. Now let's just check the user guide. So this is what we will be receiving if we purchase the product. So the top view, we have the drawing of the item, the 4 antennas, and the uh, LED indicators. And of course, at the back side, you have the 5 Ethernet ports, the USB port, the reset button, the power switch, and the power port. Now, of course, this is also 12 volts powered and 2 amperes. And all the ports on the Ethernet are gigabit capable. So uh, the power switch is very useful, so you don't need to unplug and replug the power adapter every time you want to reboot the router. So the side view, we have the WPS button, but nobody uses this these days. So the unit came sealed with the plastic, and you have to remove that first. Then you can see our kickstart guide that will tell you how to plug in the routers and the credentials or the username and passwords. And we also have the power supply of the unit. So mine has the UK plug and this cannot be removed so I have to use an adapter because in the Philippines we only use US plugs. And fortunately it is using universal mains and the output is 12 volts to amperes. Now for the DC jack, you can plug this on other routers that are also 12 volts capable. Now for the LAN cable, this one is only 1 meters. And I will not be using this for a while because I have spare Ethernet cables. And for the actual unit, we have this one. As you can see on the photos earlier, it looks exactly the same. And you have the reset button, the USB 3.0, the 5 gigabit Ethernet ports, the DC power input, and the power switch. Now, the antennas are not removable, but you can fold them as you can see here. And that is it. We are now ready to power this thing on. So be sure to plug your laptop or PC to the LAN 1 and plug in the power supply and then switch it on. And it is now booting up, so you should wait for around 1 minute to complete. We'll be checking the OEM firmware before we flash open WRT. Now go to your browser and visit 192.168.1.1. This will allow us to access the router configuration page. And I will not be explaining every single item here because I just want to flash open WRT on my router. I will just give a quick demonstration on the features. So for the network map, we can see the connected devices on our router. And for the guest network, it will show us the connected devices on the guest Wi-Fi. And at the moment, it's disabled. So next is parental controls. You can set uh, devices to be locked on the internet or internet access or sites. Media prioritization for bandwidth and streaming, for speed check, I don't sure what that is, but for external storage, you can set a media server-like functionality here. So for the connectivity, we can set the Wi-Fi name and passwords, the router password as well, and we can upgrade the router firmware, some time zones, and the activity light switch.
internet settings you can set the MTU clone the MAC address if there's a modem that requires a specific MAC address the router details the default IP address you can change it here the DNS settings so the DHP server settings and the NAT and VLAN which is a bit advanced and administration settings UPnP must be disabled by the way so troubleshooting settings you can ping or trace route if there is a problem with your connection you can also back up the configuration and restore and also the previous router firmware so for the logs you can set outgoing logs to a different server and for this one the Wi-Fi settings the MAC address filtering and the scheduler so you can turn on and off the router or the Wi-Fi of the router specific times for the security this is the firewall the DMZ which we should not really touch this one and for the dynamic DNS provider for its forwarding functions this will only work if you have a static IP address or a dynamic IP address but mostly in the Philippines we are under CGNAT now let's go to the OpenWRT page for the link CC8 is 0 so I need you to read this first before you do anything to the router because there could be some information that are updated and outdated on the making of this video so be sure to give this one a quick read before you do anything so we are going to flash the factory image for 22.03 OpenWRT and we will be using this guide the preparation for OEM based install so note that you should not use the latest OpenWRT build directly because it will soft brick the router you have to use 22.03 OpenWRT version so we should now go to the dashboard again of the OEM router and uncheck the following as you can see on the screenshots on the wiki go to manual configuration and do not connect your internet on the router first we will be logging into the dashboard just like what I did earlier in the demonstration now go to connectivity and be sure to download the factory bin image file and we will demonstrate this in actual so this is the factory bin file click open and then we should now click start and you will be given uh, confirmation so click start click yes and after you click yes this will start to update the router firmware to be open WRT now this might took like maybe two minutes and after the router reboots you can see the open WRT interface on your browser you just need to wait for it and here's our OpenWRT 22.03 now you can stop here if you want to use this version but I would like to use the latest one so we will be doing another step below the upgrading to the snapshot or 23 version we need to increase the kernel partition size now you have to download the uh, SSH client or like UTI or the terminal and of course you have to connect to your router using LAN and we will also demonstrate that here so in this one I downloaded UTI and we will log in via SSH to the OpenWRT Linksys router again by default they don't have a password set so we are now on the root account now we only have to type in the following commands on the putty that I have opened so just type them as is and I will be demonstrating it right now and I have enhanced also the viewing so you can clearly read what I type so type in fw underscore print end and look for the current size and it's on the upper one 
current size is equals to 300,000 which is equal to 3 megabytes you can also set the other parameters here but I suggest so you do not mess anything with it because you might hurt the router now let us set a partition or the kernel partition size to be 5 megabytes by typing the command below and be sure to type it as this so hit enter when you are done now we should confirm if the current size has changed by typing back again the fw underscore print end and as you can see on the lower one the lower part the current size has been changed to 500,000 so we are now clear to proceed to restart this device but first we have to install the Lucy Advanced Reboot package because this will allow us to switch back to the OEM firmware interface and we can flash the latest OpenWRT there so just type the commands earlier on the screen Oh, and by the way, be sure to connect your OpenWRT to the internet at this point. Just connect it to the internet port on the router. So this command will install that package, but you have to restart the OpenWRT router before you can switch back. So assuming you restarted the router, you can now access that advanced reboot. And by clicking on the 01 reboot alternative partition, you can reboot back to the original OEM firmware. Now while inside that firmware, you can flash the latest OpenWRT image. And you will be brought back to the OpenWRT. And that actually ends our tutorial today. The configuration part is always the same as on my other videos. So you can refer to that. So thank you for watching and hit a like and subscribe.